hopefully you are seeing my screen. Yes, yes, yes Julio. Yes, yes, we are. Yes. So, okay, um, my talk today will be about uh, cryptography, data mining, pattern recognition, everything mixed basically somehow in a way because it was very challenging to think what, uh, considering the topic of the of the STR4 could uh, bring on. So then I somehow um, decided that I will try to put perspective from a little um, cryptographic way because I think it's very interesting and it's very, very uh, connected to the uh, DNA and to the experiment that we are working here. And it's also then uh, connected to the general uh, Hackathon thinking and uh, and uh, uh, um, developing different solution based on that. Uh, as um, my colleague Goras before was speaking about ethics, so this this talk should enlighten a little bit the work of the hackathon in a way of uh, technology, which is amazingly developing uh, in last uh, few years, uh, and this has a big big push, push on, on all areas and we will see some uh, recent results here today. But uh, starting at the beginning, um, so I think uh, uh, this is uh, somehow three part of my uh, presentation and it's also aimed on targeting a group of people from all these different interdisciplinary area so that we can set a common ground for maybe discussion uh, on the end or creative thinking in which way what is possible uh, what is good uh, and so on uh, and uh, the first part of the presentation is a uh, small talk uh, short talk about cryptography probably you all know a lot about but still i think this kind of view could uh, be very interesting and here is one example of statement that nobody understands at this particular moment but um, if i explain to you that uh, i only shift the letter in the alphabet for one place then uh, we can easily decode this message and uh, we can uh, understand what is written there so basically this is the the key part of uh, how the cryptography is working so we have a cipher and we have a key and in this sense, uh, uh, a cipher is defined a set of rules that you are using to encode the information. So in this case, uh, we can say that this set of rules is moving uh, alphabet for the one. And on the, other key, uh, on the other side, the key is how to arrange those rules in some more complex pattern, maybe because it's a very easy example. Um, and the question that arrives, of course, from, from that uh, naturally is, uh, it is possible to come with the combinations of ciphers and keys that could never be determined. So basically this is somehow uh, the gold uh, wish of the cryptography to, to, to have a system that you cannot break. Um, now, um, in any case, it's like that and also, we can see that in nature that uh, due to enough time and data and the, the pattern that we are living into the encryption uh, process, somehow someone can usually uncover the rules of your encryption and with the, that you can uh, encode the message. Um, now one of the, this example of shifting the key for one letter is one of the oldest method of, uh, of uh, cryptography. And it was named after Caesar, after Julius Caesar, uh, more than 2000 years old uh, um, uh, method in basically because it was used for the military purposes in the uh, Roma Imperium when Caesar was moving messages for three letters basically. Uh, and here, for example, I was moving in the first one only for the one letter, and then you can see here you can different you have to hear different shifts. Basically, you can use all twenty five different shifts to move this message around, and it's 
kind of not so hard to to uh, uh, decode the, the the message because you can just go through all possibilities and try to check. Now the next uh, part, uh, which is a little bit more advanced uh, kind of cryptography, is monoalphabetic cipher. And monoalphabetic cipher is a class of cipher where the code is basically done um, uh, with letter and with kind of dictionary. So each letter has another letter which is replacing this first letter. And if you're doing this constantly to the whole uh, alphabet, you're getting this mechanism. And in this case, basically you just scramble the alphabet with other words. And um, <clears throat> this is the example of such kind of dictionary or scrambling the, the, the alphabet. And uh, what is very interesting here is that if you are using a little bit of math and you know that there is 25 words in the alphabet and so on, and if you are making this combinatorial calculation out, you are getting uh, the number of 400 and Mate is frozen. Septillion yes. was Yeah, yeah, it's frozen for us. I can't hear him. I stopped hearing. And I can't see his, his image is frozen. Mate, we lost you. I think you're back now, but we lost you before. Matei, unmute yourself, you, you are muted. Okay, so where were you lost me? I think it was in the previous slide. It previous slide already, okay. Huh? So, um, I was just explaining on this slide that uh, this monoalphabetical cipher have many diff different possibilities. And uh, here is one example of this kind of, of coding. And you can see uh, using a little bit of math, you can see that here uh, there is a big, big number of different possibilities that exist. And this number on the next slide here, uh, this number next slide here is showing this kind of large number. It's 403 septillion. And the septillion is a very large number uh, uh, it's a number, uh, the, 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 the estimated to one septillion, so it means that it's for 403 universes, just this uh, monoalphabetic uh, uh, kind of uh, coding the text with 25 uh, letters. So it's a large, large uh, number, and it's a little bit more advanced method that, 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 that we have uh, uh, described with Caesar method. And what is also interesting, maybe because of the topic of this hackathon is that if you are talking about large numbers and you're talking about the size of the universe on the one side and the microscopic size of the, 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 the most uh, small thing that we have discovered uh, and these are the, in the, from the particle physics, uh, the size of the, of the one meter the size of uh, human is somewhere in the middle, what is very, very interesting. Now, uh, of course, uh, the question now for the second uh, um, second mechanism or, or, or yeah, algorithm uh, we can uh, ask is again, uh, if that is hard to crack. And again, it's not so hard because it's only a little bit and this is because of brute force and because of computers we can uh, go again through all uh, different um, 
uh, elimination and analysis, we can move towards the uh, decrypting the messages. And this, this is then done by the so-called frequency analysis because uh, it is kind of hint of how to start to decode the messages. And here you will see in the English, the letter E is a very common letter. And this is the fact. And here in this message, you can see uh, five different letter E. Uh, and based on that, uh, this is called so, so this, this phenomena of frequency of um, often letters or and um, and uh, here uh, again you have some encoded message now you can just go and make some counting of the letters that are very often and you can see the letter X here is very often. And then you can assume and say, okay, this is maybe letter E in the English language. And uh, so you can then count another things which are very often, and you see that there is uh, A, E, R, X, which is, could be letter D because letter D is also very, very often in the English language. And in such a way, when you get E and you can get D, you can then uh, encode other letters in the iterations and you can see what is written and you are breaking or with some kind of frequency analysis, you can achieve and decode the message that you have done with monolithic alphabet techniques. Now, of course, uh, this is not so complicated techniques again. And uh, more, even more advanced is so-called polyalphabetic cipher. And here it can happen that the first S would be translated in WB and the last S in another letter like, like H. And uh, this is so-called Wigener cipher from the 16th century already. And um, uh, the the encoding take place in two dimensions, basically on these uh, these uh, techniques. And if here we are, uh, and we are putting the alphabetic characters in uh, two dimensions, in one, uh, in X and Y dimensions, let's say, and just make a square of all combinations. And then we just need to pick a key which we will use to encode the message. And in this case, I can pick the key like Matei, we, uh, and uh, then what, uh, how, how this is working is that I'm going just to the first letter of my message, which is hello from hybrid lab again. And you are seeing that this is letter H. And then if I take the key Matei, I'm just putting the key all the time above all letters. So I'm repeating this, how many letters come so much repeating of my um, key. And then I'm just moving from the H towards the my uh, letter in key. And then I'm looking to which is uh, marked in the green arrow, what's, what is the letter in the X axis above. And I can see that this letter is F. And this is generally, um, generally the, the, the way how the, the algorithm works. And in this sense, <clears throat> you can see that uh, I can quote uh, this hello from habits again in this kind of text. Um, now, Charles Babash was the mm, uh, very famous name from the computer science who basically um, had a lot to do with uh, this uh, uh, methodology of decoding this system. And uh, because it was very hard now to, to encode, uh, to decode the system uh, in a way when you have a key and then you could have different letters for the same letter from the main message. Now here, Charles Babash uh, was thinking again in the frequency terms and he counted 
how many letters separate repeated pattern into the encoded message. So in this, my example, for example, if you could count the uh, some pattern and you're seeing the pattern then, and then you are counting and you see that you have separation five spaces between first and second uh, uh, chunk, and then you have 10 and you have 15, then you can uh, somehow uh, uh, say that the key is probably five letters long. And with that, you're again coming to the frequency analysis and based on the frequency analysis, you then uh, further can uh, decode the message. Um, now, the, the question that I posed on the beginning, and now this is, was the third, uh, let's say, um, famous algorithm in cryptography, was if we can, if we can uh, encode the message so that you cannot break it. Now, now the, the answer is clear. As you use key in this method that I present, you also create some kind of pattern in the encryption, uh, in the encryption set. Mm, uh, and if you are creating the pattern, the pattern can be discovered. Uh, however, we have a special um, kind of these uh, uh, techniques from 16th century. Uh, when we are saying that the key, in my case, this key was my name, but we are saying that the key has the same, same uh, length as the message itself. It means if I have 1,000 characters in the message, my key will be uh, 1,000 characters long. So in this sense, the key will not repeat. And if, <clears throat> if the key is not repeating, I cannot make any frequency out, and I'm unable to decode the message. This is completely fine. And, and it's okay, but we have here, uh, uh, and the method that, that, that can work then is I'm using one uh, key for one message. And then when I'm decoding, I'm changing this key and I'm using a second key for the second message and so on. And this is complete, completely fine. But uh, uh, here we came to the so-called the key distribution problem, because I need to transfer also this my key uh, to the um, my uh, communicator on the other side, and this is not simple. Uh, basically, especially not it was not simple uh, in those days. So you can always use one-time path encryption. However, uh, we have here the key distribution problem. So based on that, then uh, further with the development of technology and communication flows, telegrams and Morse code appeared. And uh, the mentioned um, one-time path cryptography that we said that has this, the, the length of the key the same as the message somehow uh, was uh, transformed into the uh, machine that you all very good know from the history. And this machine is uh, the Enigma machine. And uh, in this sense, what is the differences of the sheet of uh, long key is just that here the key is somehow um, settled into the machine itself and you are parameterizing the key. So you don't need to trans, uh, uh, send the whole key, but you just need to know what are the parameters of the key. And you have this kind of machine. And uh, this uh, Enigma was, of course, very, very important uh, in the Second World War when uh, mm, uh, the code from Germany was cracked. And what was interesting is that uh, we mentioned before Charles Babash. And here, it was Alan Turing, who was the second uh, very important person in computer science. That's one of the most important, if uh, somebody claims, uh, who construct basically the, the, uh, the machine who could crack the Enigma code. And for that purpose, he only need, based on all this frequency analysis and thinking, uh, he only need 20 character, characters that were repeating in the encrypted message. 
and this was not so hard because the, um, the Adolf Hitler was uh, many times mentioned in very uh, good way between the Germans, and that that means that he started uh, to 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 search the patterns uh, which could uh, uh, somehow um, have um, see the way to to this kind of message about him. Now we are coming uh, after this uh, uh, history to modern digital computing, which basically uh, today based on the same uh, approaches that we have present. Uh, and it's a much more practical, of course, because we are now having computers which uh, make a million billion operations per second uh, and brute force is more practical and so on. Uh, and we are using the same principles that we have used on Winger and Turing, uh, basically today in digitalized universe, when we are paying bills or when our emails is protected by intruders. And um, if I'm now uh, approaching to um, somehow uh, and the basics of cryptography system, uh, here you can see uh, the setup of such system. So basically you have two uh, people who want to communicate, Alice and Bob, and Alice would like to pass a message through the Bob, through some public forum. In this case, this public forum is internet, but of course Alice don't want that this, her message is public. So he, she wants to send a private message. And here you have uh, enemy if, which is a very smart person and which could jeopardize this uh, uh, transmission of the message. And uh, <clears throat> we are talking about so called uh, Kryptonium Pi, which needs to be uh, implemented in case that you, we want, when we want to pass the message untouched from one side to another. And uh, in this sense, enemy AF can make uh, with uh, appropriate uh, uh, knowledge, even jeopardize message in a way that she could change the message that Alice is sending to Bob. Um, however, uh, the crypto system is based on uh, uh, mathematics principles. And in this sense, we can uh, detect if somebody really wants to change or had to change the message that was encrypted by person A who was sending the message to the person B. In this, in this sense, you can see on this, uh, on this picture that we have plain text, we have the encryption key, we have the decryption key, uh, we have a shifter text, and we have two things. One is encryption program and one is decryption program. Now, the encryption program and the decryption program, this is public available and it's completely open. So the uh, key point in today digital, digital cryptography is to, uh, um, to hide and to uh, protect the encryption and decryption keys. And uh, for example, if somebody tried to interrupt the message and uh, changed something in the message that Alice is passing to Bob, then when there will be calculations for the error on the end. And if their error appears in this kind of uh, uh, calculation, mathematical calculation between the uh, encryption key and the encryption key, uh, we know that something happened and the message is not then is not authentic. I said uh, the encryption program and decryption programs today are public and uh, encryption K and decryption K are those things that we are uh, hiding. And based on that, if the encryption key, for example, is the same as the decryption key, we are talking about symmetric encryption, which is also logical and about private, private uh, messaging, uh, which is also logical because the both keys are the same. However, in the 1974, three authors uh, um, have um, invented an asymmetric um, 
uh, encryption and asymmetric encryption means that encryption key and the decryption key are not identical. However, they can be calculated from each other. And in this sense today, all main cryptography that we are using each day by just browsing the web, for example, is based on these uh, uh, two principles, uh, as probably you have all experience with mostly your if you have a bank account and you're paying something, you're always getting the private key for yourself and public keys they are available to everyone. And you, only you with a private key can access the content. And of course, uh, even more uh, encryption is the key base of the cryptocurrencies, because this is the key point that you can transfer the value over the over the web and it's impossible to change this value in between and somehow try to to to, to change anything but it can be it's, it's it's not breakable just on the beginning point not not in the cloud anymore so if somebody for example is taking your private key of course he can then use your identity and the system will work perfectly but basically this is the only treat in this kind of system um, that is available. Uh, when the message is already sent to the internet and it's traveling through the internet, it's impossible to crack it down. That's why also cryptocurrency works. Uh, it will be maybe possible with quantum computing and a lot of much more power, but for the moment, this is far, far away and it's just uh, not, uh, uh, not available today. Uh, however, the, the, the the errors or in or breaking into the messages are happening on the beginning and on the end points and of course with with stealing the encryption and decryption keys so uh, just an example of uh, of the browsing and also i'm browsing now in this uh, sense and if you click to the browser you can see left in an upper uh, place which protocol what is public key uh, which are algorithms for the uh, private key everything is written here i don't know if this is seen on zoom but this is basically this uh, uh, lock locket on the top of the browser i have a key in slovenian language however if in, in english you can basically explore it with the properties and all the details about technology and algorithms for encryption are available there Now, this was, uh, like I said, let's say uh, one uh, uh, introduction to the development of crypto, uh, cryptography till today. I, I mentioned that this cryptography, and probably you know it, it's coming out from, for, for, from the um, Greek, uh, Greek language. And uh, with the development of the technology, also the new way of improving the cryptography uh, are appearing, especially uh, <clears throat> with uh, areas that are, are connected to biotechnology. Uh, as DNA, and you are doing that on the hybrid lab now all five days, is just a kind of natural language um, with with this for uh, uh, with the structure uh, and with these four uh, base pairs of other intimate quantum and C to C, and uh, in this sense we can uh, also use the example from the nature to try to upgrade our uh, let's say cryptographic uh, systems on cryptographic principles and this. Uh, field is very active last few years only it's not something that you can uh that was much research done uh, uh let's say 20 years ago the idea was growing already in 1999 that this could be used however the technology was major just now and in the last few years there are a lot of things happening in this area and this is from one um 
article um, published just recently where they proposed DNA cryptographic system for medical images uh, data analysis process. And uh, uh, the, 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 the key goal here is to increase the complexity uh, of encryption uh, to not uh, with, with a goal to be more safe. Uh, and in this sense, they, they have uh, suggest the use of coding, uh, which is inspired by the DNA. And you can see here the flow by the uh, encryption. And you see the first they are scanning the image, then their uh, digital image is then uh, processed with the encryption with key generator. And we have seen this, we have chosen just key generator when I was showing the, the simple examples there. Here, more advanced algorithms today are used to generate the key for that. And then we are getting back out binary data. And this is just ordinary binary data as everything is binary on the first level of messages whenever you are seeing. However, then these binary data are somehow uh, uh, coded into the DNA data. And then these DNA data are saved. And uh, if you are seeing here, for example, a way how it could be coded, you can see that you can code the letter A with binary value that, C that, with, with four different, basically, with two bits, uh, four combinations. And uh, here on the left side, or on the right side, you, you are seeing these bits, basically, and key generations and binary encryptions, and then the DNA encryptions. And this DNA encryption then can be, as I understood also, uh, is intended to be used for the field when we can store the information in the DNA because uh, probably also uh, discussed this on, on Hackathon. Uh, just in one gram of DNA, we could uh, save all the data of the web uh, today uh, on the YouTube channel. Um, so uh, now the reverse process, how we can get the image back from the DNA data. And here again, this additional structure of using DNA coding uh, from binary data is done. Now we are reading DNA, DNA, uh, DNA data and are transforming into binary data. With key, we are getting digital image and then we are getting back the original image. And this is only one of the, one of the uh, scientific research and examples of application that it's explored uh, today. There are many, many different applications here. And even, uh, mm, of course, there are also a lot of challenges, uh, especially on this last phase, if they want to go from to silico to, uh, to DNA um, level of, of uh, saving the data. Uh, now, we were talking about cryptography now for, for the holder of the presentation, and we saw uh, during the presentations the um, importance of keys and that keys are, are somehow um, leaving the patterns into the messages and we can discover that and that's why we have more advanced methods and so on and so on and so forth. And of course, there is another dimension that is very fast developing, and this is uh, so-called data, uh, with which we can help to try also to uh, search patterns. And if we can search patterns wherever on wherever domains uh, uh, we are doing that, it's also the cryptography, the area when the these kind of algorithms are very very uh, useful. And in this last part, last part of the presentation, I would just like to. Um, to underline uh, uh, or just to uh, draw very, very general uh, because what, the, what we can do today based on that, because this is really also a very vivid area of research, so-called gene expression and searching the patterns into the gene uh, for um, discovering the properties of 
uh, of characteristics of of the um, of the cell, and uh, one such very general uh, flow how this is done in gene uh, array expression on this area uh, is in this four um, phase circle let's say and we have here uh, experiments or ex or all experiments that's also hybrid lab is working and then we have external data sets which are and uh, this is the data part of the uh, life cycle and then we have integration of these two parts into quality control uh, to associate these with biological objects and to uh, use, uh, if necessary, uh, data transformation to see the things from another angles. And uh, these, these, these two, let's say, phases are very, very important because it's always like that. If we do not have the data that are quality, um, that are well done and are verified and quality is done. Uh, any other steps into the cycle are not benefiting us with uh, useful results. So it's really, really important that this first phase is correct. And uh, um, use of the internet and collaboration science and all these databases also in gene expressions that we are knowing today is just um, uh, an excellent example that the data are many times verified and that the things are uh, uh, um, easier to 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 compare to clean to to save and so on and so forth uh, and then after this first phase of data and integration we have data modeling and here basically now the three uh, steps or, or three areas of computer science are covering and mathematics are covering these things and also uh, study in biology are covering this in uh, great details the first is statistics this i think that is the field that computer scientists and biologists are uh, maybe most uh, easy to understand each other because of the terminology and everything else and uh, in both uh, uh, areas this is very well covered uh, however, then we have one uh, special uh, research area which is called machine learning and today this machine learning is connected with uh, uh, artificial intelligence and here we have already a special language and here the new interdisciplinary areas between biology and computer science are having a place more uh, in the last decade, so we have uh so-called uh, uh computer science and uh biotechnology uh cross crossover uh when they are micro rsd and analysis and so on um, and then the third part of this very important data modeling is data uh, visualization which is of course very also important because with a visualization we can really do uh, research and try to narrow our space of solutions or to discover new things um, and here a lot of different techniques and methods are used and a lot of tools basically today we today the uh, what we can do in education and what we can use is not that we are programming uh, the things from the scratch or that we are even uh, implementing some kind of algorithms but the most uh, important is that we are using the open source uh, tools for different domains that already exist. And I will say a little bit more about that uh, on the end with some uh, links, uh, which uh, I have put into this presentation. And then of course, the last phase of that is uh, annotating the things, writing articles and uh, checking the discoveries that we are getting here. So um, it's a very good article uh, uh, here linked and referenced down the trends in biochemical sciences, which is uh, explaining and covering this whole process in the details. And I think it's very, very useful uh, in uh, for all different areas of uh, disciplines from biology to computer science. 
and here a little bit more detailed uh, way uh, how all the story is uh, is done basically it's just classical uh, flow of the data but here uh, upgraded with the uh, all steps needed from uh, area of uh, uh, microbiology and uh, you can see here that we are having training set mixed preparing data metrics different uh, visualizations heat maps and so on find a proper algorithm uh, which are again because dna arrays are so so long into the dimensions has uh, many many uh, uh, features has special uh, uh, algorithms to do that so it's just a special field of data mining for, for this area due to these characteristics and then of course uh, evaluate and all these questions are then related to this all uh, uh, four or five phases that we are having here and um, here is one for example online tool which you can use and where you can find all these kind of algorithms there already with tutorials with uh, uh, explanations of algorithms with examples that you can see uh, when i'm using for what is just a thing that you need to put hands on and to use and it's hard to explain that in kind of presentation is kind of to be uh, learned by learning by doing However, of course, with some uh, uh, directions, uh, but it's like similar, uh, similar um, nature as in programming language. You can't not learn programming language just like that in computer science that you are opening the book and are reading and uh, explaining the things to yourself, but you are learning the most basically when you are coding. And it's even better I'm explaining to all my students even if you don't not understand all the things around, it's important that you are coding because this is the same as practicing the piano. So you can you can learn a lot of uh, how to play piano from the book, but if you don't practice the piano, you will not have the results. And here is really important, and uh, this is maybe also the challenge in the computer science courses generally, that the hands-on programming should be more vivid by uh, just learning by doing principle than by explaining the four loops and uh, the algorithms and so on because you need to touch and then you need to be creative and then you can start um, all glue all these things together and this then is exactly the area that's also hybrid lab is is uh, directing and this is just one of a many many uh, tools available so i just pick one but you have like uh, unlimited each university maybe not each but uh, each country had its own platform uh, almost um, so um, here i'm moving to to the hybrid lab and to to, to your work on the end of the talk uh, just to, to to underline something that you probably already have discovered during your work uh, so you are reading the in silico data from the data sets the, the key format is FASTA format, which is take based format representing the uh, name of the nucleotide sequence. And then you have uh, single letter codes back then. And here you were doing the, the laboratory work with uh, uh, genes from these two, uh, these two uh, naming conventions from 5075 to 5092, which are uh, responsible for blue pigment uh, there. And if you are going to the web page, you can read that kind of sequence just by searching this, this part and this part, and then just putting a uh, selected region into the uh, region show, and then you can get the whole, whole uh, uh, for the genome from in this region and you can import that of course in programming language in these tools and then you can start to make different analysis coding uh, but of course before you are doing that 
it's good to go and make some Hello World class tutorials, which are all uh, also in all uh, uh, different uh, uh, courses or open sources or knowledge hubs available. Um, so this may be for the start uh, in, in this sense. Uh, so for example, if you then never have programmed, no, no worries about that. You can go to basic DNA sequence analysis with Python and you can do two, three uh, um, uh, tutorials and then you can start to see how the things are uh, working in this, this specific area. And then you get the knowledge how to create your own proposals for your own exploration tasks. Now, another thing is if you then ever coded in Python, then I prefer that you are going to some tutorial in getting Python in four hours, for example, or in, in, in one week, and you are using like 12 hours course for doing the Python, and you will be able in 12 hours because it's really easy language, understand Python to this extent that you will have all necessary things that you will be able to uh, play with the DNA sequences inside these characters. And then of course you can have another different um, uh, uh, resources, especially maybe some general articles which are describing uh, the areas that you can uh, enlarge the view where you are working. So I didn't touch the art on the end too much of so photography, and you can uh, you have many artworks based on that, and even more with DNA sequences. So probably here could be a, a whole discussion. But as I'm not from this field, entirely I'm believing that uh, I should listen to your results and to your outputs for time is love, and I will then. Uh, um, see also from this perspective the things uh, and with this i'm concluding my talk hopefully not having to be uh, too uh, long thank you very much mm -hmm.